Hello everyone, how's it going? It starts says here and in today's video I'm going to show you guys how to change the lower intake boot on a BMW Z4. Now I have the 2.5 liter version but this also applies to the 3.0 liter version and as you already know a lot of these older BMW hoses and this intake boot for example they crack, they go bad very easily and it's something you definitely want to have changed because it messes with the idle it can mess with the gas you might end up paying more for gas and it can overall just lower the life expectancy of the engine now I went ahead and bought mine off of eBay from a seller named parts container it was thirty six dollars and it's genuine uh, it looks very nice the materials are good it's OEM and as you can tell in the pictures, the BMW emblem is just about everywhere. Now, of course, one of the easiest ways to know if you have to have your intake changed is if you hear a whistling noise or almost like a turbo noise whenever you're accelerating your vehicle. That's one of the easiest ways to tell. And as I mentioned, we're going to go ahead and begin this tutorial. And it's not very complicated, although it can be very tedious, but yeah go ahead and get ready because we're gonna do this now you want to do this when the engine is cold and before you start just look around look at the clamps look for any obstacles and just get a general overall idea of what's gonna have to happen in order to have this replaced once you have that done you're just gonna have to get a ratchet with a 10 millimeter socket and you have to remove the intake assembly so you have the best access to the lower intake boot as you can tell right here I'm starting to remove it and it's going to be as mentioned two 10 millimeter bolts once you have that removed you're going to need a flathead screwdriver and there's going to be two clips beside the intake box that needs to be unclipped once you get through that you'll start to get into the process of removing everything to get access to the lower intake boot. Okay, as you're going through the process of getting access to the lower intake boot, you're going to realize that the majority of the work is actually removing those clamps, as you can see in the photo. Now, those clamps use a flathead screwdriver, but I find it very hard to use, sometimes because it comes out of its position. And what I highly recommend to you is that you get a screwdriver with the correct socket that fits those clamps. Now I believe it's either a 6mm or a 7mm but that's what I ended up using instead of a flathead screwdriver. They're very easy to use and I'll provide a link below in the description to one as well as the intake boot if it's still available. Once you have everything removed so you have access to the lower intake boot you're gonna see that there's two more of those clamps. Now I tried to take a good picture and as you can see in the lower middle section there is one of them and the other one is right there on top of it there's two left one for the larger intake hole and the other one for the smaller intake hole and those two will just simply need to be removed again I highly recommend you get the screwdriver with the correct socket size for those clamps okay once you have those two clamps removed, there's going to be a hose that's connected to the lower intake boot. The easiest way to remove that is to get a flathead screwdriver and literally just kind of fit this flathead screwdriver into the connection. Just kind of like stab it, literally stabbing it inside. And that will allow that hole that's connected with that hose to open up and allow you to pull that hose out. Once you have that hose removed, you're pretty much good to go with your two hands. Just simply grab on the old intake boot and just pull it out. Now that you have it removed, you can see the inside. And at this point, you want to get your new intake boot and you want to get it prepared to place it inside. Okay, and by getting it prepared, one of the things I learned about changing this intake boot is that the easiest way to have it installed is to get all of the clamps have it already on the intake tube and you want to tighten it to the point where it won't move from where it's supposed to be but it's not so tight that it's not going to be able 
to fit inside the new sections. All right. I'm going to be using this picture again and when you're putting your new intake tube into those two holes you want to press hard against it and, and to the point where you do not see that shiny white part of the engine opening anymore. That's how you know that it's completely covered. You want to make sure that it's in all the way around because you do not want to go back to this in the future and have to readjust it. Do not be afraid to put force on the intake tube to get it to fit. I promise you it won't break. Hey guys, I just wanted to make a quick update. This thing had me actually stumped for a day. And as you can see, this is a little cover that goes inside. Now, when I pulled this old one out of that section, this thing was actually attached to this. So when I was trying to connect this new one, which already has it on, to this one that also had this, it wouldn't connect. I obviously didn't know what was going on. And if you happen to have the same problem, just make sure you pull this out. You literally pull this thing out from here and it should be able to go in. Once you're able to get it inside, like so, you can go ahead and start to tighten it with the little strappers. As you can tell from the previous video, you want to make sure everything is good, especially with that slider. And the last thing I want to mention is that when you're putting the clamps on and you're tightening them, of course you want to leave it facing a certain direction in which you have easy access in the future. So that's in case you installed it wrong, like for example you didn't slide it all the way into the engine, the intake boot, and you have to remove everything and readjust it. You don't want to be in a position where you had it at a really complicated spot or in the future when you have to change it again. Now as you can see the two main ones are very easy, it doesn't have to really be moved in a certain direction or easy to tighten and take off but the other two are more complicated now the little one has a cool trick where I actually found out that if you make it facing up you can actually be able to access it from the top of the engine and it's actually very easy to use and the other one is going to be harder but like I mentioned just have it faced somewhere so that it's easier to get access to in the future once you get all of that done, at this point you just want to fit back the intake tube, the other parts of the intake assembly, and of course once you're putting the big box back inside, make sure that it's in within the flaps of the original parts, and you should be good to go. It's a very easy process, especially with all the tips I've given you that I wasn't able to learn online. I had to go through it myself which is part of why I'm making this video to help you guys out. Okay, we're gonna turn this car on and see how everything goes and make sure that there's nothing that we missed. It seems to run absolutely fine. Everything sounds well and watch, when I accelerate, you don't hear that noise anymore, that turbo noise, that whistling. It sounds normal, which is perfect. Guys, I highly recommend this screwdriver. Well, it's not really a screwdriver. It does the same job as the flathead with these little clamps that you're looking at right there. But this thing made the job so much easier. Instead of fiddling around with the flathead and then, you know, getting it off of its position constantly, this thing made it so much easier. Crazy what a difference this thing made. And I couldn't imagine how hard it might have been with that flathead screwdriver. I highly recommend that part, and I'm going to provide a link below in the description if you don't have one already. These things are a must if you want to do something like this that can get very complicated and tedious when it's in a really bad position. Anyways, that concludes the end of this video. I hope you guys liked it and I hope they helped you out in your situation. If you have any questions just let me know in the comments below and I hope you have a good one. Peace.